Hello, and it's story of the day for year three to six, and we are back with Grandpa's Great Escape by David Walliams, and we're at chapter 25, Deeper Doo Doo. Things were not going to plan in the interview room. Detective Bone dragged Detective Beef back to the corner. You fool, you're meant to be the bad cop. You can't just say, if you would be so kind. No, asked Beef innocently. No, you're meant to be menacing. Menacing? Yes. I'm not sure I can be menacing. It's hard to be menacing with a name like Kimberly. I don't think they know your name. You've said it a hundred times, exclaimed Beef. Oh yes, sorry Kimberly, replied Bone. You just did it again. Apologies, Kimberly. And again. I promise it won't happen again, Kimberly. Please stop saying my name. Maybe it's best I am the good cop after all. But you just said you wanted to be the bad cop. I know. Beef looked very sheepish. But I've decided I would like to swap, if you would be so kind. Bone hastily agreed. The interrogation was fast turning into a farce. All right, all right, have it your way. You be the good cop, Kimberly, and I'll be the bad cop. Thank you. And remember, please don't call me Kimberly in front of the suspect. Sorry, did I call you Kimberly again? Yes, you did, declared Beef. Sorry, Kimberly, replied Bone. Jack couldn't help himself any longer and laughed and and it leaped right out of his mouth. <laughs> What's so funny? demanded Beef angrily. Nothing, Kimberly, sniggered the boy. Kimberly looked as furious as somebody called Kimberly could look. Now they know my name, and it's all your fault. Bone was not ready to accept all of the blame. I think your mother and father are, are most at fault, really, for naming you Kimberly Beef in the first place. Why on earth would they give you a girl's name? Kimberly is not a girl's name, Beef shouted. It's unisex. Other supposedly unisex names Mr and Mrs Beef could have called their bouncing baby boy included Alice, Carol, Haley, Jordan, Lindsay, Marion, Mer Meredith, Paris, Sandy, Stacy or Tracy. Oh yes, of course it's a unisex name. You meet so many men called Kimberly, said the detective before composing himself. Now, look, we have an interrogation to to do, remember? Yes, yes, sorry. And remember, you are now the good cop, so try and be nice. Yes, 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 I'm a good cop. Good cop, good cop, good cop, good cop. Beef repeated it over and over again like a mantra so he wouldn't forget. Let's do this, said Bone confidently. Is there time for a very quick pee? asked Beef. No, I told you to go before we started. But I didn't need to go then. You just have to hold it in. How? Cross your legs or something. Whatever you do, just don't think of a trickling stream. Oh, now all I can think about is a trickling stream. Detective Beef, you are making us both look highly unprofessional. Sorry. We are meant to be two of Scotland Yard's finest detectives. The finest. Then let's do this. Beef and Bo strode back over the table with a renewed sense of purpose. Right, began Beef. Would you like to come over for dinner? Jack and his grandfather looked at each other in disbelief. That's too nice. But you told me to be the good cop. That doesn't mean you invite them over for dinner. Be thought for a moment. Lunch? No. A coffee morning then. No. Look, Kimberly. Don't call me Kimberly. Kimberly, let me run this interrogation from now on, OK? Beef descend descended into a humongous sulk. This sulk was so humongous that now the detective refused to speak, nod or even look at anyone in the eye. Instead, he just shrugged at everything. Bone returned his steely gaze to Grandpa and soldiered on alone. Three priceless antique aircrafts were badly damaged today. Would you care to explain yourself? He didn't mean any harm, protested Jack. It was an accident, I promise. You've been very quiet, old man. What do you have to say for yourself? demanded Bone. Jack's eyes darted to his grandfather. Was the old man about to say something that would drop him into... Even deeper doo-doos. Chapter 26, Turning the Tables. Down in the underground interview room of Scotland Yard, Jack looked nervously at his grandfather. What was the old man going to say? Grandpa straightened his RAF club tie before looking Detective Bone straight in the eye. I have questions for you, he declared. Whatever are you doing? Jack whispered. The only way to beat the Gestapo is to play them at their own game, Grandpa whispered back. No. You don't have questions for us, old man. That's not how it works, replied Bone, with a note of disbelief in his voice. 
Little did the detective know that Grandpa was not a man who would take no for an answer. When is the launch date for Operation Sea Lion? he demanded. Operation what? asked Beef. Don't play the fool with me. You know darned well what I'm talking about, said Grandpa as he stood up and started pacing the room. The two detectives shared a look with each other. Now they were even more confused than Grandpa. The pair had absolutely no idea what the old man was on about. We really don't, replied Bone. You can never win this war of yours, and you can tell your friend Mr Hitler that from me. I never even met him, protested Beef. Neither of you are leaving this room until the start date for the ground offensive has been given to me. Having been an officer in the RAF, Grandpa carried with him a natural sense of authority. The two detectives were cowering at the tables, having turned on them. Jack was impressed. But I meant to be playing badminton later, said Bone. Grandpa stopped pacing the interrogation room and leaned over the table. He brought his face closer to Beef and Bones. Despite his age, the old man was formidable. You are not leaving this room until you tell me. But I really need a pee, begged Beef. I'm going to wet myself. The poor man looked as if he was going to burst into tears. Tell me the start date for Operation Sea Lion. What shall we do? whispered Beef. Let's just say anything, replied Bone. Then both answered Grandpa exactly at the same time. Monday, Thursday. This had the effect of making them look like liars, which of course they were. Come on, squadron leader, ordered Grandpa, and Jack stood up to attention. Let's leave them in here to sweat it out. We'll be back in the morning. Grandpa spun back towards the policeman. You better tell us the truth then. Oh my goodness, there will be trouble. With that, the old man marched over to the huge metal door of the interrogation room and Jack followed closely behind. The two detectives watched in stunned silence. Thinking quickly, Jack swiped the keys from the lock and pulled the door shut behind them. His heart was racing as he turned the key once more and locked the two men in. Click. Just at that moment, the detectives realised they had been had. They raced towards the door to try and open it, but they were too late. They started pounding on it for help. Brilliant work, sir. Now, let's run, said Jack as he tugged his grandfather's lead. There is one last thing, squadron leader, replied Grandpa. He slid open the hatch in the door and shouted through it to the two detectives. By the way, Kimberly is definitely a girl's name. Then Jack and his grandfather raced off down the corridor and up the stairs and out of Scotland Yard. Tomorrow we'll be at chapter 27 and we shall find out what Jack and his grandpa do now they have escaped Scotland Yard.